Hey guys, welcome back to Blackwater Woodworks and CNC. Wanted to do a video. I just did a project for a really good friend of mine. He's been a mentor and motivator and a co-worker, friend, you name it, uh, here at the fire department we both work at. He's always been a rank above me, but uh, I ain't mad at him for that. A super good guy a while back he gave me some of his uh, badges and patches and things and asked me to if I could make him a shadow box for it and so this was kind of the idea that I'd come up with I wanted something to look like this for him um, and he loves hickory so I went out and got a couple nice uh, s4 hickory boards didn't really have time to go to the lumber yard and mill it up but I decided I wanted to do box joints on this and uh, this is my jig I use an Incra miter gauge and a fence there and uh, you'll see how this works uh, I use the Freud box cutting dado stack it's just two blades here you can do a quarter inch you can do three eighths inch and what you're going to do is you're going to build your fence here with this hardwood key and stand your board up on end and you'll slide your first board up against that key and run it through the saw and you'll see it'll cut this nice notch that blade has a flat grind uh, so you get a nice smooth cut and you're just going to keep sliding over and lock onto that key and continue cutting slots the whole width of the board As always, guys, if you like my stuff, please hit subscribe, hit like, get those notifications. You can leave me comments. I love to interact with folks. You see, you get nice, even slots here. Now we need to make this match up perfectly to the next side of the box. So you're going to use a full uh, notch here and run your next board up against that. And you'll see what happens here. It, it'll cut a perfect notch out of the front of that board so that they will match up nicely. You can see I need to do a new spoil board because I have a little bit of tear out here. Not a huge deal. I'll clean that up with a sander before I put the whole thing together. So now we've cut that first notch out. You're just going to slide that right up against the key like before and then go ahead and run notches the entire width of the board again. And this way, when we fit them together, uh, everything's nice and even on your edges. You're typically always gonna end up with a small cut there on the end, but I'll show you here in a little bit how we deal with that. So a quick dry fit, you can see if this is set up properly, you're gonna have nice snug joints. Uh, this is not gonna go together all the way just because of that little bit of tear out I do need to do a new spoil board um, but you can see how snug those are going to be that's going to be just fine and then here's all four sides of the box again just dry fit but you can see how the edges of the boards line up nice if we do it right i use type bond three for everything usually use way too much of it uh, but so i get my board set up and i don't really clamp these things I more use my clamps to draw the corners in nice and tight of course we put that layer of glue in there and they're even more snug um, so I'll just clamp a square in there make sure everything's square and then I'll use my clamps to draw in everything nice and snug I might leave the clamps on for 10 minutes or so here in this shot you can see that little tiny finger we have on the end I'm just gonna run that through the table saw and get rid of that slice all the way around the box. Uh, hindsight, I would should have used a taller fence. This is one of the bigger boxes I've done, so uh, you're gonna see in this clip here, I get a little a little uh, wonky, not exactly flat. A taller fence would eliminate that. 
Um, but it was fine. I just hit, hit my edges with the sander briefly and, and everything was just fine. But we get this cut off and now we've got equal uh, fingers on each corner. And with a little sanding, uh, those corners turn out nice and sharp. You want to raise your blade to the thickness of your material for these kind of joints. And I typically will be proud about a 32nd, which leaves a little bit of wood off the corner. Once that was all done, I just used my router and a uh, rabbiting bit and cut a rabbit in the back. I wanted to do a phrase, face frame. I would have loved to have milled a piece of hickory to do this with, but I saw this oak chair rail at the store. It looked great, so I just went with the oak. Um, and I think it looks nice. This, I just mitered the corners. I made everything about a maybe a 16th bigger than the box and then I'll come back and just sand my extra off. So put the box aside to dry up and started working on the back of the box. Uh, took an old expired out of service turnout coat and uh, hacked it up and some 3M spray adhesive and that goes on real nice. This is just seeing what it looks like and I'm happy with this so far. This looks really cool getting to where I want it to be. I've really come to like the polycrylic satin clear finish. That hickory was way too beautiful to put anything but clear on. And I like the way the satin looks and feels when it's done. I typically do anywhere from four to eight coats. Uh, this one I think got six total. I probably put uh, four on and then just barely touched it with some 400 grit sandpaper and then put two more on and maybe touched it again with some 600 grit and gives a nice feeling when you run your hand over it. And of course it's clear because I don't dare hide any of that hickory. For the leather fronts, I actually 3D printed a couple brackets and then put studs in there and then use the brass cap screws you see there to attach. And this gave it a nice look so they stood off of the surface a little bit. Uh, as badges, I just pinned right through the stripe. The shoulder patch got hot glued on and the coattail was just hot glued on. And tacked down. This is all his lieutenant stuff. He's a captain now. I'm a lieutenant. We've kind of moved up together there last couple years ago. But I'm loving how this turned out. Next up was cutting the glass. I've kind of perfected my glass cutting abilities here. I like to use a heavy piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch, nice and flat and square. And then this clamping straight edge uh, the clamps are long enough to lay on top of the glass, but still touch the plywood there. And I measure it out where I need to cut. And then you need to use firm, even pressure with your cutter and just hug that straight edge all the way across. And you only, only run across it once, never come back and do it again. I'm gonna get rid of this straight edge and then slide your glass out so that that cut is right on the edge of your plywood there. You can barely see that cut, but I uh, get that even with the edge and I'm gonna keep, keep that in place. Then you use the ball end of your glass cutter. You can give a bunch of taps right close to where you scored the glass and you can actually hear a difference in the sound and you can see that kind of crack through the glass. Keep firm pressure on the pane and then just a quick downward snap and you get a nice clean straight cut on the glass and then i'll hit it with some low grit some 60 grit sandpaper just to knock any sharpness off so it makes it a little safer to handle and you just definitely still cut yourself very easily with this glass but knocking off the anything sharp is a good idea just real quick. So then we've got the box all dry, that face frame's on. Everything's been sanded and, and uh, sealed with the polycrylic. 
just lay this down. Now I cut my glass uh, roughly a quarter inch smaller than my overall dimensions. And this will give me about an eighth on each side gap, just in case I got wood movement and things like that. Um, just drop this down in there carefully and then I'll center it so I've got an even kind of reveal all the way around all four sides. And then I just use some 100% uh, silicone, put a nice bead in the corner there, and that'll keep that glass in there just fine. And we'll set that aside to dry. So I knew this thing was gonna be pretty dark because it's five, five and a quarter inches deep or so, plus the face frame cast a shadow and I know it's a shadow box but I want this stuff lit up so I got this from Home Depot I hadn't used any I was kind of afraid to order LEDs on Amazon because I didn't want it to show up and not be what I wanted so this came with a little remote RGBs so you could change all the colors and it's an eight foot tape uh, that has intervals where you can cut it to length I didn't film this, apologize, but uh, I just used some hot glue and kind of put it in behind that face frame at an angle so it would shine back. Of course, branding the back. I just used some brass screws to put that back in and here you can see the LEDs going through a cycle, all the different colors. Uh, he was super happy with it when he saw it and I had a fun time building it. So I think it turned out great. Hey, thanks, guys. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think of it. Thanks for watching.